Hey, Such, could we hurry it up? He here? doesn't say goodbye either. <laughs> Bradaloni Hardware and Garden Stores brings you Garage Logic Podcast number 1309, May 16th, 2024. Okay, thank you for that. 90, <laughs> what? God. Bless 94 you. degrees on this day in 1934. <laughs> and it was 31 degrees on this day. <laughs> In 1890 and 1929, and the swimming season is here. Beautiful weather forecast for this weekend. I hope you get a hold of Aquaside. They've been helping people maintain Great Lake Shores for more than 60 years with products made there right in White Bear Lake, and they get rid of algae and weeds and all the junk that freak out the kids. The products are easy to use. They work quickly. They're registered with the EPA and DNR. Don't let weeds overtake your lake or pond this summer. Call Aquaside. Describe what you're looking at. They'll help you understand your weed problem and get the right products to you, and your place will look great all summer long. Call Aquaside at 1-800-328-9350 or go to Aquaside.com. Hail the flashlight, King. And now, from the mayor's office above the boathouse on the east shore of Spoon Lake, it's Garage Logic with Chris Reavers, Manning Technology Corner, Kenny Olson from the Krabby Coffee Shop, John Height in the newsroom, and of course, the rookie. Here is your flashlight king, fireworks commissioner, and the keeper of common sense, your mayor, Joe Sushir. Before we get to a very serious matter, Hell, they're all serious, aren't they? Aren't they all? <laughs> uh, Tim did a little more research. Do you know that uh, there was a flood in Texas? It was called the Th- the Thrall Flood. Yeah, I never heard that one before. What how was do it you called? Th- how do you spell it? T H R A L L. Okay, Thrall. Thrall. It was in 1921. Were all the telephone lines down? It set some important records, 23.4 inches after six hours, 31.8 inches after 12 hours, and 38.2 inches after 24 hours. It holds the national 24-hour rainfall record at the U.S. Weather Bureau station there. 1921. The The Thrall Flood it's worth mentioning since it was the deadliest flood in Texas history with 215 drowning statewide. This comes from the U.S. Geological Survey. There have been so many catastrophic rain events in Texas history that they have established a separate web page chronicling them. The researchers found 215 major and 41 catastrophic rain events from 1853 to 2001. And then I went and down the old rabbit hole and I went and looked up the Thrall flood. My God, what a flood. Death, destruction. It resulted in uh, new regulations and infrastructure rules and what have you. My point is go look it up yourself. T-H-R-A-L-L. September 7, 1921. Uh, That's northeast of Austin. And uh, you're going to continue to have, well, we are going to continue to try have, try having the wool pulled over our eyes as the rain falls in Texas. It is nothing new. The climate change. So hysteria has nothing to do with the climate. There hasn't been a comparable since. Nope. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. Okay. 1921. Now... Uh, turn to last evening. Oh, my, I just had it in front of me. Here it is. Late last night, the uh, paid family leave bill passed during a late night vote in the House. Are you paying attention? Yes. The uh, Republicans have voiced frustration. The vote was taken shortly before midnight last night. And it allowed proposed changes to the state's paid family and medical leave bill in order for it to move on to the state Senate. If passed, the changes would take effect 
in 2026, giving qualified employees up to 12 weeks of family leave and, and 12 weeks of medical leave per year. Uh, however, between the two categories, it would be capped at 20 weeks. Under the changes they did late last night, a payroll tax for the leave program is going to be 25% higher than what was in the original bill passed last year. Oh, that's it, huh? 25% Only 25%? And employers pay at least half that tax, and the rest would be deducted from employees' wages. After the vote, members of the DFL move to adjourn. The House is not allowed to meet past midnight unless a majority of lawmakers agree to do so. But I think the adjournment was uh, the adjournment was hustled in. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. Minnesota DFL holds the majority. House Republicans claim the DFL cut off their debate as they headed into the home stretch of the session. The majority has had two years to get their work done. They've had two years to act on these so-called priority bills. Now they're shutting down debate because they did not prioritize their time well enough. It is not the responsibility of the minority to pass the majority party's bills. It is the responsibility of the minority to make sure the voices of our constituents are represented. This silencing of minority voices is absolutely shameful. This is not a house of 70 members. Is it a house? It is a house of 134. And Democrats are disregarding that said House Republican Minority Lisa, uh, Leader Lisa DeMuth of Cold Spring. Uh, you have that uh, chaotic, you, you want the chaotic scene, scene that we can uh, give you the audio of this chaos last night near midnight. This is at 11.56 p.m., the mm-hmm. House floor session. Uh, 1.5 and allow the House to meet past midnight. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Those opposed, please say no. The motion prevails. The clerk will take the roll on the bill. In other words, there was no vote. Madam, Madam Speaker. Point of parliamentary privilege. We're in a roll call. Um, excuse me, Point what is happening here? No, this, no, we Madam are Madam Speaker, done. what's going on? Point of parliamentary Madam privilege. privilege. Madam Speaker, point of personal Madam privilege. Speaker. Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker. You have just silenced the voice of the minority. You have silenced the voice of the minority. Madam Speaker, point of order. The clerk will call the names of members voting remotely. Carol. Carol. Carol I. Carol I. Palowski. And what they did is they. Sounds like the House of passed a a new version of the bill that raises taxes. And here's what's going to happen, okay? Let's just cut to the chase. It's another scam. Some cultures assimilate to fraud easier than others, right? Some cultures assimilate to corruption easier than others. What's to stop a cab driver for a lift or whatever, if they're still here. From saying my back hurts, he pays 1% out of his payroll tax, his employer pays the rest, and he's off for 12 weeks, making what he would have made anyway. What's to stop somebody named Johnson or Swenson from saying, my mom fell down in Florida and hurt her knee, I gotta go down there and spend three months, mm-hmm. and I'll get paid. What This is, we're being driven closer and closer to uh, equal misery shared by everyone. The larger scope to think about this, because I know certain employers, I think we're one of them, already has something like this in place. Mm -hmm. But what this is going to do is the small businesses that made it through the pandemic, that dusted it off and found a way to make it, make ends meet and are trying to get back on track now, this will cripple all of them. The radicalized DFL is not your parents' DFL. The radicalized DFL is pre uh, based on their lens that they view the world, which is oppressed and oppressor. They uh, they view this as a, this is another means by which they can delegitimize work, delegitimize having to work, delegitimizing competition, entrepreneurship. This is another means by rewarding 
people who choose not to work and just continuing to tax people who do. And mark my words, this will be taken great advantage of. Mm -hmm. There will be people who will turn this bill upside down, figure out every possible way to scam it, scam it and not work. That's what's going to happen. Right. Oh, they'll get right on it. They'll, they'll, that's the first thing they'll learn is how to beat the system. You know, the other part. And some cultures are better than that. Yes. At that than yes. others. Yeah, that's yeah. true. I, I, I don't want to go against what you're saying, but I, I think you're, you're giving people more credit than what they deserve. I think the majority of Minnesotans have no idea what happened last night and going forward we'll have no idea that this is even in place. Well what credit am I giving? Of, what credit uh, am I giving? That there's gonna be a, a big group of people taking advantage of this. I, I don't think most Minnesotans are even aware of what what happened last night and of this new situation. Well they will be. It was too late to make any news, any print whatever people will find out about this they'll particularly find out about it when they see their pay stub and mm. they will I, you can say what you want and that's fine i'm not changing my mind this will be ripe for fraud as chris said though a lot of large companies including where my wife works has oh. this already as part of right their and they get to benefits. opt out they get to opt out companies that already do this are not bound by this bill yeah but the companies that don't do it will be forced to by this bill and i'm just suggesting to you based on everything else we've learned over the last 30 years this will be taken advantage of and the other part john that's different is this applies in, in the cases that you're referring to and the ones that I mentioned before, Yep, that's applying to basically, and I'm just going to use like, let's say Hubbard that applies to full-time employees only. Whereas the state uh, introduced one that Joe is talking about, this now applies to anybody that resides in the state. And in, uh, some, someone pointed out earlier to Joe and I, well, this could also apply to people that work remotely that maybe they, their employer is based out of Minnesota. But My back might, hurts. Yeah, I might live in California or wherever I'm living right now. That would yeah. also, in some cases, apply to that person as well. I, I agree with you there, except I know the the one I'm talking about also applies to part-time. Oh, sure. Okay. Uh, and this so goes into it. effect January 1st, 26? Yeah. yeah. I thought it was 25. 26. Oh, it's 26. 26. Okay. 26. Yep. I, I just, I don't have a lot of faith that people will figure this out. Yes, I do agree that this is perfect, you know, for corruption and people will take advantage of it. I just don't think that most people are even aware of what's going on uh, in the Capitol unless it involves, I don't know, abortion and weed. Well, you you'll recall I mean? that uh, what this will require is the establishment of a completely new bureaucratic wing of the government. Oh, that's no doubt. Yeah. A commissioner of sorts, additional <laughs> right. employees. I have uh, all my faith in the Minnesota government under the administration of the worst government in the history of the state, the worst governor in the history of this state. All my hopes have been dashed for competence. Uh, all my hopes have been dashed for any responsibility. All my hopes have been dashed for any adulthood. They slap this thing together. Uh, with a with about a point zero zero seven percent take of your pay for the uh, which they could get away with by saying, "Come on, it'll cost you about three bucks a week." But now to change that, which happened last night, and there'll be there's new ways they can raise the payroll tax to fund this. And all I'm telling you is, we have no reason to believe this isn't merely another boondoggle because it's been put together by terribly incompetent people yeah put together and forced down our throat and that bit of audio that you guys found and played is proof that they do not represent the people of minnesota they do, they're not working for us they're ruling over us and they'll continue to get voted in because they're being voted in by people who are being taken care of by them yeah so, so yeah and that's no the way. other part and joe mentioned it this entire notion that we're making it easier for people not to work is the absolute opposite of the way that this country was constructed. Well, isn't that just part of making um, the general populace more reliant on government for 100%. virtually every? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But which will work 
until it doesn't. And then the taxpayers of Minnesota, no, not the taxpayers, the government of Minnesota will face a great awakening. Uh, the day is coming when these grandiose plans of theirs will not be affordable because they will have expended, they will have used up other people's money to the point where they no longer can. Yeah, and by that time it'll be too late. Well, it's yeah. already happened. Look at look at Minneapolis. They, they right. they've had so much vacancy. I don't care if the email, uh, whatever that email from last week, that they've now had to increase property taxes as a result. We've had that. We had that story what a couple weeks, if months ago. Mm -hmm. So that's already happened. That's a small window into probably what will happen with the state as a whole. Don't you guys think? Yeah. If I'm getting some technicalities wrong, uh, I am clinging to my belief that what the DFL has created here, uh, not purposely to be taken advantage of, but the DFL has created another means by which people so inclined to take advantage of it will. There Correct. Will, there will right. be there will be fraud. There will be corrupt. There'll be lying. They'll the uh, sharp characters will get behind this and figure out a way to scam the living hell out of it, and it's another disaster. Well, I like the. Food I have no fraud, doubt you know? that it's yeah. another disaster. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> the uh, Angel Martins of the world <laughs> getting fifty percent of ten percent of nothing. <laughs> Come on, Jimmy. I got a bad feeling. <laughs> Oh, my God, Anguilla has come up again. Oh, how so? We just returned from a week in London. We enjoyed a great dinner at a restaurant called Sky Garden, atop the tallest building in London. Very cool place. I noticed in the menu that the chef was from Anguilla. Please see the attached photo. The meal was not cheap, but it was very good. As they say in Anguilla, come lay we go. Come lay we go, L-E-H. Love the show since the start. Keep it going, Charlie creamers and he sent what a copy of a of a page that was in the menu welcome to the fen church by kurt gums by kurt gums kurt a passionate chef hailing from the picturesque caribbean island of anguilla where we're number one yeah. was inspired by his mother's cooking skills and his passion for food blossomed at a young age shaping his unique approach today his menu, his menu is a playful canvas, a celebration of his roots and an homage to the vibrant street food culture of the Caribbean. With finesse and precision, Kurth elevates these flavors to new heights using refined, fine dining techniques. Join Kurth in this culinary jollification where every bite tells a story and every dish is a memory. As they say in Anguilla, come lay we go. Yeah. Come lay we go. Come lay we go. Yeah, let's go. We'll be there. We own it, baby. Got it. And we'll be there. Mm -hmm. All right. This is how we're going to take over the United States. Much like the Allies first landed, where they land Sicily, then they moved into the main island of Italy, and then up. That's how GL. We're going to work through the West Virgin Islands. Let's go. Let me.